All right, so here we are at build video number four. I've got the rear axle apart, and for those that have seen my build videos before about axial uh, gears and such, you'll have seen something similar. But I'm gonna go a little bit of a step further on this, and I'm gonna show you that I have taken apart the rear axle of the vehicle, okay? Uh, and what I've done is I've filled up the whole channel with marine grease. Now, it's not packed to the point where nothing's gonna be able to spin, but I know water and mud and all that yucky stuff is getting in there. Uh, somebody on the RC Sparks forum said to me, Medic, do you clean out the uh, grease that's on the inside already? And with this kind of thing, you can see the difference. It's green there. Uh, the answer is no. It's basically uh, a lithium-based grease as well, so I'm not worried about anything reacting with each other. But once the backside is packed with marine grease, and I keep showing this, the people that haven't seen it need to see it, though. Uh, there you go get it at any uh, hardware store. You want to make sure to turn your bevel gear here and get it all greased from the inside, okay? Because that's going to protect the bearings from the uh, water and such. Also, I'll make sure that the bearings are covered. You can just do that with a quick finger blob. Make sure you got some paper towel handy already or else you're going to be a little bit sorry. <laughs> Uh, this marine grease is pretty sticky stuff, but that's what it's supposed to be. Good protection for the bearings. Now, wipe off my finger. On the inside of uh, the other side of the uh, axle, you can see a bearing uh, with this small uh, pinion in here, or a drive pin, okay? I haven't put any marine grease in here, so what I'm going to do, normally I'll just use a straw from one of these tubes. Maybe you guys have a gun at home or something like that that will... Um, uh, distribute the grease into the axle housings for you. What I'll do is I'll go through, I'll fill this up as much as I uh, want to and through, again, as I always say, the magic of TV. It's done just like that. So now you can see inside, I've slathered both sides pretty much full. I know a lot of people out there, that's overkill. It, it totally is. In fact, everything I do in RC Adventures is probably overkill, but it doesn't mean it ain't fun. So I know that there's going to be tons of water, tons of mud and muck and getting uh, stuff in there. And after the years of experience I do have with these trail trucks, uh, as long as you don't have it packed too full and the gears can move, uh, that is a good amount of grease, okay? So I'm just going to make sure that the drive gear is backed off. I could have done this first, of course. It's going to be real mucky. Uh, drive gear is backed off. I got lots of grease on the inside bearing. Okay, that's going to start scooting out here in a second. Just got to get out the pinion. Like a dummy, I didn't do this first. Now it's all slippery. There we go. So I want to pack that grease down. Uh, make sure the hole is nice and lubricated. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> so there, we got the... We got the bearing, everything's done. We'll push that back into place and uh, install the axle housing together. Like so. Yeah, it's pretty greasy, pretty messy stuff. Um, it's part of the fun though. Just like so. Just do a quick wipe up on all the extra stuff that has squeezed out. Oh, there's just so many that's what she said in this episode. I love working with lube. That's another one, I guess. <laughs> okay, so it's gushing out around the bearing. Now I know when water gets in there, at least the bearings have a chance against uh, corrosion, right? So I'll put this, just kind of crack it open a little bit. The bearing sticks on the outside. I can actually just feed it right into the trans more transmission into the back diff gear. When I close it down, you can see it's still squeezing out some uh, marine grease there. Same with this one here, and I'll get this axle uh, closed up. All right, so now that I pretty much have the rear axle together. Uh, Let's have a look at the C-hubs and the steering knuckles, because this is the front uh, axle housing, okay? These right here are steering knuckles, and this one on the front would be going somewhat like this. Now, when the servo is moving and these are mounted properly, they move the tires back and forth, because on this 12 millimeter hex uh, mount is where the actual tire rim goes, right? This is actually attached to the uh, axle housing, and it turns the tires back and forth on this pivot point. One of the things I'm doing with this heavy-duty build is actually making sure that the weak points are getting covered, right? While still leaving an area that's, that, that might take a little bit of pressure when it's needed. 
These original stock uh, steering knuckles are awesome. They're reinforced. You can see how they're uh, uh, actually built up on the side with the hardened plastic. But when I'm out on the trail, I don't really like risking uh, getting in a tight, you know, torquey area and breaking the steering knuckle. So I do an upgrade to uh, these aluminum ones, okay? Different people uh, make uh, ones, not just Axial, for the, for the Axial product. The one that I use, though, because it's an Axial-themed uh, truck, is AX3496 Aluminum Knuckles, okay? Come two to a pack. So I'm going to actually do the upgrade, but while I was doing this, I wanted to show you that when I put it together, there's bearings, right? Bearing on the inside and the outside, and the drive pin. Everything has been covered in marine grease again, okay? I know that you guys are probably tired of hearing that, but this is part of what makes your truck waterproof and last longer, okay? I did a video a short time back about uh, um, actually waterproofing. You can watch that right here. And this has to do with uh, more of maintenance and care when you put your truck underneath the water. Let's have a look, okay? So this really, I left this plastic, you can get carrier hubs, uh, aluminum as well, but I've never had one of these snap. Again, I also want to kind of have a weak point just in case it does, because I don't want to uh, uh, bend permanently um, or break these aluminum carriers, or these aluminum uh, steering knuckles. So I leave this one stock plastic, okay? So I'll get these mounted up, I'll get this other one built, get these on either side, and we'll move on to the actual uh, steering that I'm going to be putting on the steering rod. Alright, so, shocks. This is a modified pair of shocks, or, you know, this one, I guess. You can see the spring and everything is different. This is made by G-Made. I got it at RC Four Wheel Drive, uh, their store. You can also get it at junfact.com. And I've done a little modification here for my scale shock. Okay? Pretty, isn't it? Somebody had mentioned to me uh, they didn't see a lot of travel here for my uh, scaler to move on. Is it going to be good for rock crawling? Well, this actual shock itself focusing, there we go, is as scale as I want to go. This build really isn't about overall performance. This is about scale movement and brute strength, right? So, but if you notice, even though it doesn't go down quite a bit, yes, there's an internal spring in here and an additional spring to help with jumps and landing like that, but look at the actual uh, length of the rod itself. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That's huge. So when one side's flexing, the other one can still move quite a bit. Okay, you guys must like that, eh? Pretty cool. So, here it is, check it out. Don't let shocks and putting them together be intimidating. You just have to do it once or twice, understand the concept and away you go. So, basically a C-clip, uh, a, a, a plunger, O-rings, a cap on the end, like so, everything comes together, snaps together. You want to make sure that it's uh, been oiled inside. These have all been pre-oiled, okay, because you don't want a dry O-ring <laughs> uh, because it, it's not as comfortable on the shaft. Let's just say it that much, okay? <laughs> all right, so uh, drop the smaller spring inside, bum bum bum, just like that. Make sure that I've got the uh, spring on the outside like so. You don't have to have a bushing or an O-ring in here. I choose to do that just as a little bit of added protection. And we are using a 30 weight oil. This is Axial's uh, standard oil that comes uh, in the kits. Just gonna fill that up about three quarters. You don't wanna have too much in there or you'll actually have some sort of uh, uh, liquid lock in there or an air lock. You don't want that with your shock because that's, that's just bad luck out on the trail and it will be very hard to plunge down. So I'll quickly tighten this up. Normally you can start off with a uh, paper towel, uh, that kind of thing, just so you don't tear up the uh, plastic threads with a, a big uh, wrench yet. But you do get to the point, like now, where I've got to use it. So anyway, let's just fast forward on this part for you guys. You want to put on the end of the uh, rod end like this, with the eyelet. I just hold it gently right there while I just simply torque it on the end. 
nice to have a little bit of a uh, handle on here. Okay, not too tight because you don't want it to start bulging at the bottom, right? You just want it to sit on there properly. Now that that's there, you can see that the part is pushing out, but you can freely push it in without any resistance inside, which means the shock is set up well. Sorry, I got a bit of extra uh, shock oil on there. Not a big deal. Uh, next, the part that I would be doing to uh, modify just for this extra spring here is I actually use, just to make sure it's all removable at any time, two of these ends and I get this red spring, check it out, straight from the stock axial shocks that are already two-stage. Okay, So it's the top spring. So it's a perfect firmness for what I'm looking for. And something this simple, I'll take the rod end and I'm not going to put pointy side up, I'm actually going to have it pointy side down. The reason that is is so it can easily feed itself uh, back in when it's at full extension and then comes back down. Here I'll show you what I mean. Pinch those into place. Perfect, see? Just like that. So when it actually fully extends and everything's moving, it still feeds itself back down, you see? Perfect. Anyway, there you go. So there's the shocks. Let's quickly mount those up. Right, so now we're a ways into our uh, actual build here. And you can see things are coming together okay. I'm about to put on the front axle uh, and the actual suspension. But I think I should take the opportunity, even though I would normally just leave these, because they're very rigid, hey? Look at that, they're very, you know, maybe I should just leave those. Or I could switch over, or I could switch over. I do have this pack. Uh, this is actually for my XR10, but at the same time, uh, these links could be very useful uh, in this truck, but I haven't tried them, so you, got, you and I are going to be basically learning together. Uh, Three-stage aluminum high-clearance kit for the XR10. Uh, I'm going to sneak a few of these pieces, I think. Can't do a heavy-duty truck and not have it the ultimate, eh? Hey? Check it out. Look how pretty those are. Okay, so... Depending on the looks, I would love to do this, these uh, links right here. They're pretty darn beefy. Yeah. Maybe up in here somewhere. Yeah, what do you think of that? I don't know. For a scale look, like it is going to be going through the water and the mud and stuff. Do I want it on there as a big brute like that? I don't know. Why don't you post up in the video description below if you want to see these big buggers go on there, or if you want to see bent links. If I can even get them to fit, eh? Here, have a look at that. I don't know, I kind of like it. Next video, eh? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys.